is everywhere and there is so much hype about what it can do, like create content with fake humans or write an entire essay in seconds. Yeah, but there's actually a dark side to all of it. Here to tell us how to make AI systems more equitable for everyone is Senior Product Manager of Responsible AI at Google, Kamal Singh. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome, Kamal. Um, listen, it's not a surprise to anybody. We know we live in a biased society. And so a lot of people either think one thing, which is um, that there is AI and fairness and they should it should not be subject to this bias, or the opposite, which is, of course, AI is going to be biased if it's learning off of all of these systems. So let's talk about the main concerns that people have right now, people like you. Yeah, so, you know, I view it from a few different lenses. Um, as a technologist, it's a very interesting engineering and algorithmic problem to solve. Um, as a parent, how do my children adapt or we adapt to a world that's intrinsically more tech enabled? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as an immigrant and a woman, how do we design AI systems to work for all kinds of social groups? Um, and as you said, and as we know, that AI is trained on huge volumes of data mixtures, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it learns to infer patterns and associations from data mixtures. And if it can learn to approximate human intelligence, such as reasoning or um, creativity, it can also learn to approximate human bias that's hidden in the data, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's an it's a interesting and a challenging thing. For sure. Um, you know, for example, if AI is trained on a huge corpus of images that are captioned as doctors, yeah. and all of these images happen to be of a certain gender, um, AI will soon learn that doctors can only be of a certain gender. Um, mm -hmm. it's a good right? Example. So, um, another example is um, in healthcare, we're using AI for early diagnosis mm -hmm. um, of diseases such as cancer. Mm -hmm. But um, are we also designing AI to predict or infer that men could also have breast cancer? Okay. Right? Oh, How inclusive point. is yeah. our data set? So, you, um, you train your team to design algorithms and solutions to tra tackle this exact problem of fairness. How do we sure that when we're giving machines, you're sort of circling around this, these superpowers to reason like humans that we're doing it in a way that is safe and fair? Like, what's the counterbalance? Mm. Yeah, um, so we are actually guided by a set of AI principles that are publicly published, available. Um, and, you know, one which is relevant to our conversation today is how do we develop and deploy AI in a way that maximizes benefits to society while minimizing um, the emergent risks in this area? Um, one example that's close to my heart is uh, making AI see all kinds of skin tone mm -hmm. uh, or making AI see skin tone, um, we all have skin tone and it plays a very important role in how we interact with the world, mm -hmm. how we interact with technology um, and how the world interacts back with us. Mm -hmm. But historically, um, computer vision systems, which are type of AI systems, have been trained on images that are essentially lighter skin toned. Mm. Um, and there is an inherent disparity that computer vision systems don't work as well for darker or medium skin toned people. Mm. Yeah. Um, so our teams in research worked with um, Harvard professors and teams to um, develop what's called the Monk Skin Tone Scale, mm -hmm. um, named after Dr. Ellis Monk. It's a more inclusive skin tone scale than the de facto industry standard. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's used in training AI systems. Um, and we open source the scale, so anybody can use it when they're designing their own um, AI systems. Which is fantastic. All right, so let's talk about what has been the biggest challenge so far when it comes to implementing fairness in AI. Yeah, I mean, hey, what's the mathematical definition of fairness? Or what's the statistical way to define fairness? Mm -hmm. How do you objectively define ground to truth that is inherently subjective? Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, when you ask in today's gen AI era, when you ask an image generator to generate images of a CEO, mm -hmm. within the confines of four to eight images that get generated, do you model the world that is right now, which is biased, or do you model a world that could be? Um, mm. Do you ground the generation in reality or do you morally imagine a world that could be different? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's a fascinating I mean, it's question. a philosophical yeah. mind, mind, mind crap, mind storm, mind crap. Mind and, yeah, yeah, mind field. And yeah. there's like a lot of active discussion between researchers, academics, regulators. Um, 
it's an exciting time to be working in this space. It's true. Listen, a lot of us are very familiar with our day-to-day -day interactions with AI systems, whether you're using Siri, Alexa, ChatGPT. Mm. So how can we make sure, or perhaps the way that we're using AI at home, how can we check to see if our systems that we're using are working on a bias? Can we? <laughs> you could, you could. Um, few ways, you know, you could do counterfactual testing. What that means is kind of change up the prompt a bit when you're interacting mm -hmm. with the AI system. Change the input conditioned on different locations, zip codes, or genders, mm -hmm. um, or ethnicity, and see if the response that you get is different. Um, don't be afraid to challenge the AI to show its chain of reasoning, chain of thought. Say, I mean, ask how did you come up with this conclusion? Um, and some AI systems can actually give a pretty good description of how they arrived to a conclusion. Um, and that could give you cues on how things are designed and potential shortcomings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so as we look to the future, one thing we know is that AI is going to only become more pervasive, even more than it is today. But um, is it going to get smarter? And what does the future of fairness in AI actually look like? Yeah, I'm, I'm both optimistic, excited, um, and, and you know, wanting to make sure that we all move in it, knowing that there are many different aspects to it, like researchers need, are thinking about it, academics, regulators, ethicists. So there's plenty of dialogue in moving forward in a way that's not just bold, but also you know, responsible. So if we do it right, we could be living in a world where potentially um, you know, early diagnosis of diseases is not confined to only those who can afford it, mm -hmm. um, or a world where court judgments are not marred by um, personal prejudice of the office holder, mm -hmm. um, right? Where kids can actually imagine themselves in different roles um, that they were not able to imagine themselves in. Um, and maybe it gives us a chance to, in correcting AI bias, we correct our own bias and co-create a reality that's more purposeful and meaningful. Come on. Thank you so much for being here today. This is a really fast. We're just scratching the surface, but I feel like this is just like we're gonna have more and more conversations as time goes on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.